The Arctic Monkeys sixth album saw them push their sound in a radically different direction after the success of AM, but there were many fans around the world who were understandably alienated and confused by the world of Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino. What did it all mean? What was with all the lounge jazz vibes? Whatever happened to... That rock and roll, eh? Contrary to what many may think, I think Arctic Monkeys have made an impressive sonic leap with Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, and if you give it enough listens, everything becomes clear eventually. I am Luke Edwards, and this is my review and analysis of Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Welcome to the Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, a luxury lunar resort for ageing rock stars built on the same spot Neil Armstrong landed Apollo 11 back in 1969. This is a place where all the nights never happen and the days don't exist. Better yet, the moon's largest crater, Clavius, as depicted in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, is at the epicentre of an overwhelming wave of gentrification, a place where the wealthy elites are now finding sanctuary. Delving deep into the psyche of the hotel's troubled inhabitants, it's clear all is not well. For one thing, the mass exodus from the Earth to Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino is implied to be a harbinger for some kind of impending apocalypse back on our home planet, where the shining cities are on the fritz and the chimes of freedom are falling to bits. Even the political sphere has been trivialised to the point where the leader of the free world reminds people of a wrestler, and politicians in general are bendable figures with a fresh new pack of lies. Worse still, there appears to be a meteor strike on its way. You could meet someone you like during the meteor strike, it is that easy. But let's start at the beginning. The album opens with Star Treatment, a song which introduces us to a washed up rock star going through his own Elvis in Las Vegas phase of his musical career, taking up residency as a lounge singer on the lunar surface. The rock star in Star Treatment is like one of those immortal rock and rollers who is seemingly going to live forever. For now, however, he's found himself on the moon in his twilight years. He seems weary and admits he only wanted to be a ghost who haunts you in a rearview mirror. Today, his star has faded, but that was always going to be the case. After all, it takes millions of years for the light of a dying star to reach us, and by that point, the star may already be dead. Then there's the semi-distracted singer in one point perspective, playing in a quiet room, possibly in a drunken state. Bear with me, man. I lost my train of Rambling about forming a covers band and telling his audience how he's going to run for government in his underpants, the singer is riffing on stage. It's quite possible the coming apocalypse on Earth has hit this singer the hardest, I suppose a singer must die. tempting him to contemplate his own death. The idea that people are coming to Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino to escape Armageddon is also hinted at in American sports. The character comes across as smug when gazing down at the battleground states on planet Earth from his hotel room in outer space. Strange as it may seem, he is handcuffed to a briefcase, even though it has no money in it, and he doesn't even have the keys to open it. It's quite possible he's a musician with mafia connections who has escaped a life of crime on Earth and is now living in some kind of self-imposed exile. In his interview with Pitchfork, Alex Turner admits, I like the idea of an underworld, not necessarily in Las Vegas, but somewhere in my imagination, and that idea helped me to write the lyrics on the record. The ex-gangster in American sports now wastes his time in a virtual reality mask, 
watching politicians fight in Parliament and consorting with God on video call to atone for his sins. Ultimately, making it to the moon seems like an empty and hollow victory, especially given that he has no reason to be so satisfied with himself. Maybe the fact that he's still alive is enough. The title track Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino tells us its guests ponder all the questions but just manage to miss the mark. So who is Mark, you might wonder? Well, here he is. Mark speaking. Please tell me how may I direct your call. Apparently written from Mark's perspective, the song compiles observations Mark has made in his role as a hotel receptionist about his guests, throwing in a few fragments of random conversations he's picked up on. There's a man who claims to be Jesus in the day spa filling out a form, and a lady called Mama who pops out to sing a protest song and comes back wondering where it all went wrong. Then there's a lecherous pervert grappling with a young lady saying, Nothing, however, distracts Mark from the job in hand. Good afternoon, tranquility place, hotel and casino. Meanwhile, two lovers share a bed in a hotel room in golden trunks, whispering into each other's ears just how much they fantasise about each other. Whilst making trivial observations about how the President of the United States looks like a wrestler, the two lovers share an oddly intimate moment. Needless to say, it's a fascinating insight into the eccentric kinds of people who reside inside this hotel. The next song, 4 out of 5, basically acts as a glossy double-page advertorial spread promoting Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, reeling off reasons why guests should escape planet Earth and envision life on the lunar surface on a Saturday night dressed up in silver and white, and performing Hokey Cokey with the opposite sex. The whole song is intended as a satirical comment on modern marketing. I guess even in the face of an apocalypse, it looks like there's still an opportunity to sell you things. It's also worth pointing out that the name of the taco restaurant on the roof, the Information Action Ratio, is in itself a reference to Neil Postman's Amusing Ourselves to Death. In that book, the information action ratio is a theory which refers to how helpless people feel when they're bombarded with too much information. And clearly, there's an abundance of helpless people staying at Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. The idea of this lunar resort being a place of self-indulgence and mind-numbing entertainment comes across in the world's first ever monster truck front flip. This is where Alex Turner's lyrics pivot to become more satirically acute, passing comment on modern society's addiction to technology. Cribbing a slogan from an old Kodak advert, it begins with an arpeggiated Farfisa organ and the song appears to explore people's infatuation with handheld devices as they wrap their tiny mind around a lullaby of brain-shrinking moving images. Referring to a YouTube video of the world's first ever monster truck front flip at the 2017 Monster Jam World Finals, it becomes quite obvious this song is about how the guests at Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino are enthralled to the pattern language of technology they're addicted to, preoccupying themselves with banal trivia and pointlessly inane digital dross. Things get slightly more dystopian in science fiction, which describes a songwriter feeling rougher than a disco lizard, presumably nursing a hangover at the hotel. He is creeped out by religious iconography he's seeing around him, finding himself harangued by religious fanatics preaching mass panic on a not-too-distant colony. Clearly, the end is nigh, so as more money is printed in a fit of quantitative easing, the songwriter escapes by watching reflections in the silver screen of strange societies. 
he is painfully aware that machines have now risen and admits he's got the world in a wire in the pocket of his raincoat. The narrator of science fiction attributes this reliance on technology to an apparent symptom of consumerist techno-lust, which only summons a swamp monster with a hard-on for connectivity. I mean, you know, it might have been to do with some of the stuff I was reading and some of the films I was watching around then, and the idea of... Um, I think it started perhaps from this song, Science Fiction, actually, yeah. maybe, which is on, on yeah. there. And I think it started with the idea of science fiction and how it's often used um or the 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 worlds that are created within it or you know or the 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 idea of space travel or like you know time travel or whatever it might be is is quite often it seemed to me or by my estimations it, it was used to uh put out there an idea of actually about the world we're living in the psych rock freakout of She Looks Like Fun paints yet another picture of tranquility-based hotel and casino's idea of entertainment, culminating in partygoers beaming virtual reality images into their skulls. They celebrate the fact that this song could well be exploring the stupid antics the younger guests at the hotel get up to while dating each other and partying inside their virtual worlds. Batphone seems to be set in a drinking establishment within Tranquility-based hotel and casino called Tinsel City, a place where everybody has been grandfathered in and life has become a spectator sport. I almost see this place as being an old gentleman's club of sorts, full of people drinking at a bar reflecting on a memory from your youth with the song's narrator being a particularly cynical sort. I launch my fragrance called Integrity, he tells us. I sell the fact that I can't be bought. Clearly, he's no fool, but even he hasn't been able to escape the clutches of technology. Have I told you all about the time I got sucked into a hole through a handheld device, he says. Whilst nostalgic about his life, he reminisces about receiving booty calls on his bat phone from a past lover, recalling the glow of her low beams as he looks out the panoramic windows over the lunar surface, pining for her to call him once again. Full of hunky-dory and ziggy stardust-era piano flourishes a la David Bowie, the Ultra Cheese rounds off Alex Turner's lyrical attack on social media and modern technology with a rather mellow album closer. Here one imagines a lounge jazz pianist on a Steinway piano, crooning about how he still has pictures of his friends on a wall, but he never sees them anymore. Hinting how social media commodifies our friendships, this singer is disillusioned by how his friendships have been impacted by the passage of time. Experiences which used to be part of the fun, such as making spontaneous house visits or meeting friends for a drink in a bar, now freak him out because they have been rendered empty and meaningless. This is possibly due to how technology, or fame, has distorted almost everything in the singer's life. Warbling away about a place they called America in the Golden Age, the singer remembers a time when they were just trying to orbit the sun, admitting that I haven't stopped loving you once. In essence, this song seems to be Alex Turner's message to former friends he doesn't speak to anymore for whatever reason that may be. But it also doubles up as a thought-provoking finale to tranquility-based hotel and casino by bidding farewell to the doomed inhabitants of planet Earth. As a loose concept album, the Arctic Monkeys' sixth LP marks the moment the British band have evolved from garage rock revivalists into a fully-fledged art rock band. The lyrics meditate on the illusory nature of fame and express a desire for escapism as well as critiquing society's addiction to technology and wagging a finger at the distortive nature of social media. Conceptually, the songs almost act as short stories about the lives of the people staying at Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. What I would say is, I think you've got Tranquility Base and, and the song Four Out of Five that are very much uh, connected and, and you know, the, the, the style and the themes are obviously similar through, throughout the rest of the songs and, you know, more so, I think, than, uh, than ever, really. It all seems 
like it's coming from the same place. But it's still kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't know, episodic to a degree as well. It's like 11 short stories, but the collection of short stories takes its title from the fourth one or whatever it is. The characters Alex Turner creates allows him to dabble in space rock soundscapes, celebrating his love of all things retro, such as 60s and 70s art house cinema. By combining his esoteric taste in films, whilst still honouring his musical obsession with sultry Leonard Cohen-esque lyricism, Turner sets it against a bedrock of low-tempo psychedelic rock grooves. Musically, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino jettisons almost everything from AM, except for its affection for falsetto harmonies, and the sci-fi theme is soundtracked expertly well by Turner's bandmates. By introducing jazzy textures, the Arctic Monkeys are certainly enjoying this experiment with synths and David Axel Rod style bass lines. The assertion that each song focuses on the inhabitants of Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino is a hotly debated one amongst some music reviewers, as there are those who don't feel it holds up particularly well to scrutiny as a concept album. However, I actually think this LP is a remarkable evolution from the Arctic Monkeys' earlier work, with a fairly clever sci-fi concept, and it will be interesting how they continue to develop this new musical approach. For now, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino gives me plenty of confidence that the Arctic Monkeys will continue to surprise us for many years to come. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more video essays about music like this one. Thanks for watching.